what is in this box may change how you think about op amps forever. And it's not even an op amp. Before I open it and we get into this, I want to tell you, I bought this from Arrow. I love Arrow Electronics. Overnight shipping. Decent prices. I mean, of course you're going to get better prices from China, but you don't get it overnight from China. Anyway, the packing on this was outstanding. It was in a large cardboard outer box, you know, maybe that much bigger than this and much higher. Completely packed with uh, crinkly paper inside. Then there was this box, which was inside of a uh, anti-static plastic bag. And we open it up to reveal this one IC I bought. If they went through that much trouble to package one IC for me, imagine what they'll do if you buy a few hundred thousand for a production run. Seriously. Anyway, let's get this guy out of here. And we'll talk about it a little bit. Now, the first thing that we need to keep in mind when we're talking about op amps is in general why won't you focus? Will you focus over here? Yes, there we go. In general yes there are exceptions to everything. An op amp needs a split power supply say plus nine minus nine volts. In fact if I get a piece of paper one moment if we think about probably the simplest op amp circuit which would be an inverting amplifier so there's our op amp there is our inverting input and our non-inverting input there is our output so what we simply do here is we run a resistor between those two points another resistor to our input and we take our non-inverting input to ground and that's our output and what happens is we feed in a small sine wave over here and we get out a much larger yet inverted sine wave over here and that's what they show you what they never show you in the diagrams are that you need uh, VCC and VDD or a plus voltage DC and a minus voltage DC now again like I said there are some op amps that are single supply and I actually have some of them that we'll be playing with later. It's a, um, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's the LM358N from On Semiconductor. So, anyway, there's the problem. So, you know, this is, you know, I say you know a lot, don't I? Here's your breadboard, how you wire it up. Well, what you can do is you can take, um, two 9 volt batteries okay wire them in series one goes one positive goes here negative goes there and the center here then becomes your ground again it's a pain in the buttocks and that's where I think that this little chip is going to work out this is the RKZE 1212D from Recom. And I think it's a pretty unique little IC. It is a 2 watt converter in a SIP7 package. And this is the 12 volt version. So we put in a single 12 volt input and we get out both positive and negative 12 volts. So here are our pins one, two, five, six, seven. One is our uh, VCC, two is our ground. Pin five is 
ne negative? Yes. Pin 5 is negative 12 volts. Pin 6 is common. Pin 7 is positive 12 volts. So that's pretty cool. Um, our input current nominal is about 500 milliamps. And our quiescent current, which we'll measure, is around 30 milliamps. Has a startup time of 10 milliseconds and an internal operating frequency of 20 kilohertz, which will put it right on the upper edge of human hearing. So, don't know how good that is. But we'll take a look at it. I've wired us up a little demonstration board here. So we should just plug that in like that. Turn on the power supply for 12 volts. And we shall hook it up. So let's get a meter in here. Today's meter flavor is orange flavored. And that's the Anang 8009. So, just for uh, S and G's, there is our input voltage. Let's get her up to the appropriate 12 volts that this thing wants to see. We're close enough to it for government work, as I like to say, right? Alright, so you've seen our input voltage, a positive 12 volt. So we'll put our common right there. We'll come over here and we'll grab pin 7. And you see we get a positive 12.6. And then if we come over here and we grab a hold of pin 5, We actually have to get a hold of her. Hey, how about a train right in the middle of a video? Sure, that sounds like a great effing idea. Sign me up. There we go. T minus 12.59. And if we measure between our two output pins, we should have a potential in there of about what, 24, 25 volts somewhere? No, don't be shorting things out there, Polly boy. Come on. Get in there and say hi. Hi, caramba. One moment. All right, those mini grabbers are getting in my way. So, there's our voltage across 25.1 volts. And again, just to show you, positive 12 and negative hello negative 12 there we go negative 12 got a little decoupling cap up there yeah I know I should probably move it closer before somebody yells at me your decoupling cap needs to be as close as possible across the positive and negative voltage Yes, thank you. There. I hope that makes you happy. Let's uh, take a look at this on the scope and see what kind of ripple and shampipple we're getting out of her. I've got the scope hooked up to it. Brought the ground out down here just so we don't have any chance of uh, shorting anything out. I don't like to short things out. They go boom. Alrighty then. Let's zoom in here and see what Captain Rigel has to say. So there's our waveform. See if we can have a look there. I'm seeing a frequency of yeah, I don't know. 
seems to be all over the place. Tell you what, let's put a load on it. One moment. All right, here's one mega ohm resistor. That should give us a res. Oh uh, yeah, little current about 0 0.01 milliamps. And now we can come up here and take a better look at what we got going on. So I'm seeing a ripple somewhere average of about a hundred millivolts and the frequency I would say is somewhere around uh, 10 kilohertz let's see what we got going on here, let's see if we can get a better look at this let's AC couple it that. All right, we'll hit the auto button. Let it find it. I'm still learning this new scope here. Okay. There we go. Now we'll go to channel one. Easy couple it. Come on. There you go. What the... I just bring you up here. What are you doing to me? <sighs> there we go. Always a lot to learn when you have a new scope. So we take a look at that. Do a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and we see a. F <laughs> Come on. That should be right. Okay. So now we're seeing a frequency when it decides to play nice. Around 50 kilohertz, peak to peak, around 50. That's more in line with what it was telling us. That's uh, that's a lot better off. I'm much happier with that. And you guys are looking at that saying, those spikes are huge. Well, they're not really. You're looking at 50 millivolts per division. So, yeah, 50 millivolts is about... It's about the max on that dirty, dirty noise you're seeing there. Let me adjust my trigger level. Just a little bit. All right, now we're... Yeah, it's jumping all over the place. Anyway. So there it is. That is the Recom RKZE-1212DE. Single positive 12 volt in. Split rail plus 12 minus 12 out. Simple power for your op-amp projects. And this video was inspired by viewer and patron Russ. So thanks Russ, I hope this helped you out. And if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it, I'm out. Peace.